I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am here with part two of a new to me low immersion technique for dyeing yarn. And I'm so excited by what's happening with the first one which is a little bit different from where I thought I would be heading that I already need to start filming another video. Before I talk more about the project, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Don. Don, thank you so much for being my lab partner. I often film a lot of videos side by side at the same time, but I wanted to show for context where I am and the type of project that I want to do. In a hand dyeing Facebook group, I saw someone share a picture where they did their immersion dyeing with their skeins of yarn twisted in the pan. And I really wanted to try that. But you can see here with my twists, I have some gaps and I wished I had four skeins of yarn in here. So we're gonna set this up again with 400 grams of yarn. So that way I won't have gaps in between them to then see what kind of effects we get there. We may even end up using some of the same colors, I don't know. Um, but since the setup in the pan will be different, I think our results will likely be quite different and I'm very excited. But today we are gonna dye 400 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% superwash merino wool. And if you'd like to learn more about it, I am a Knit Picks affiliate and you can find my links down in the video description. I have added some removable nylon zip ties to the yarn uh, and I'm going to pre-soak it for at least 30 minutes in some plain tap water. I really enjoy dyeing twisted yarn. While this technique in the catering steam pan sort of elongated is new to me, I have definitely dyed twisted up skeins inside a kettle and I like to twist skeins and sort of tuck it into each other like you might store it and dye the yarn that way. I love the results from that resist and I think there's some other benefits to this technique as well. So I'm really excited to see how this particular way in the steam pan will turn out. Here are the dye colors that we are gonna use today. I have a 1% stock solution of Dharma True Turquoise, Dharma Electric Violet, and then a 2% stock of Dharma True Black. The difference between a 1% stock solution and a 2% stock solution is that at 1%, you have one gram of dye per 100 milliliters, and at 2%, you have two grams of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters. For that video I showed at the very beginning, I have some colors that I did already mix up. In each of the cases, I started with one cup of tap water, and then I added a quarter cup of the True Turquoise Stock or Electric Violet, which is about 60 milliliters, and then I added a tablespoon of our True Black to this one. We are dyeing 400 grams of yarn next, and I am going to start with these as a base, but I'm going to go ahead and add a cup of water to each of them, and then we will add more of our dye stock. I know that this will overall make our measurements a little more approximate for how much color we're adding to yarn, but uh, it should still be fairly reproducible. Okay, so to this one, I'm gonna add a quarter cup of our true turquoise. There's a tiny bit left in the bottle, but I'm sure that this amount of dye is plenty. Into the purple, I don't know if I have a quarter cup left. I would say I am just shy, but with the amount of purple left, let's call it a quarter cup of electric violet. I am going to actually go rinse this with a little bit of water and put the rest in there. Okay, so I just rinsed out that bottle. The volume that we add the liquid to in uh, the pan in these cups does matter a little bit for how much the colors spread. But uh, ultimately what matters most is how much of it we end up putting on the yarn. And finally, to our black, let's do one heaping teaspoon of the 2% stock solution. So in total, we have added about 1.5 grams of dye to these cups, not counting what was already present. So this is not a ton of dye for 400 grams of yarn, but all of these colors are fairly pigmented. So even at a depth of shade of less than 1%, 
which means that we're going to have the equivalent of less than one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn, we should still get beautiful uh, non-pastel colors. Because the stove is hot, or the burners were just hot, I'm just going to add some water to this uh, right away. But now we're going to come in and twist up our pre-soaked yarn into the pan. So in our last project, and maybe I don't want to twist as much, but I want to twist it. This is what I'm not really sure how to do. How to twist it, but still have it sort of just straight and not squished. Uh, so this is what I need to figure out. So if I have it in here, And just sort of twist and scrunch it like that. And I am, there's no acid in here yet. I am bringing some water from the pre-soak. Normally when I add yarn to a pan for a low immersion technique, I add it like this. So that way we can access, and I spread things out, so we can access most of this side of the yarn at once. But, and so I do it that way versus doing it on its side because here we might end up with something less balanced. But uh, with it twisted, we're accessing both sides at once, but we're not really accessing some of the middle. So we may want to re-twist it in here at some point. But what we can do, which I think is really brilliant, is a lot of times when I add the yarn in and sort of scrunch it up, one could end up being on top of the other. And so therefore there could be a skein that gets a lot less uh, color coverage than some of the others. And so by having them twisted like this, uh, we have them side by side, and while there is resist within these skeins, uh, we know that we have are going to have all four of them at the surface, and that is really cool. So this final skein may need to be uh, reskeined. I think it got snagged somewhere, but. I think that as far as techniques go, it's not magical in the sense that we still will absolutely, I'm trying to just spread some of this pre-soaked water over to that one. It's not magical in the sense that we still absolutely are going to need probably to flip the yarn in some kind of way, but it's fun and I'm really excited to see how this turns out. I'm now coming in with eight cups of water that has two tablespoons of white vinegar mixed in. This is not the lowest immersion. Um, and what this is going to do is allow these twists to float and fluff up a little bit. I am attempting to sort of fluff and spread the yarn out so we don't really have a lot of gaps. Uh, in the yarn, but it is a little bit more likely that some of these colors could penetrate a little bit deeper into the pan. Now I'm going to heat things up and then we can start applying the dye. In the first time we tried this, we got resist in a few ways. From the twist, as we expected, the areas at the center of the twist got less color. We also got resist where the yarn was on the bottom of the pan because the dye couldn't quite reach it, which is really, really fun. <laughs> so I am anticipating attempting to flip this and add color to the other side, but we're also going to play it by ear and see how things go. I think that the water level can have a really big impact on how far the colors penetrate. Another thing that I could have done is started with no acid at all, so that way the colors might spread a little bit more, but I am really excited, really, really excited. And Don, I hope you are too. Last time I used a turkey baster to apply the dye, but this time I think I'm gonna pour. And so I've added some of the black dye into this cup 
and I am pouring it on. And so we are still seeing spread down the side, um, more on the side of this skein uh, that is the one that had a little bit of issue than the others, but that is good to know. Let's get a little more of the black. I, since I'm right-handed, it's hard to not have like a lot of bias in the way that I pour, but I'm not sure if this would go deeper than maybe some of the other techniques, but we're definitely still seeing spread down the sides, uh, which I don't mind. I'm debating if I want to wait and let this color absorb before I go on to the next color. And the reason why I'm considering doing that is so that way the colors that sort of go down the sides, this way the colors are mixing once they get to the yarn versus mixing from the pour itself. So I think what I want to do is wait, uh, let's wait five minutes and see what this black does and then I will go and add our next color. Okay, let's see, it's been five minutes. And so, yeah, it's really only going down like the, the first layer or so. Applying it with the, um, applying the dye across the surface with just pouring didn't necessarily push that dye down any deeper than what we had before, which is fine. But now let's try something a little bit different. Since we know that that didn't go down, and this has a measuring, let's take about 15 milliliters of this, insert the turkey baster in this time to each skein, and apply the dye a little bit more like that. So it might just get pushed out versus being pushed into where I put it, but I am curious about how much deeper uh, color penetration we get doing it that way. Normally I might not wait to let this sort of absorb before going on, but I do want to see like how what we did there compares to, okay, this one maybe went through a few more layers maybe a couple uh, so then we can see like if that feels like it went deeper which it should have but we also maybe just push the dye towards the bottom or towards the sides so we will come back very soon okay let's look all right I definitely have more there's more color going to the center I see um, in some areas it's tiny but little bits uh, and yeah, I think I want the skeins twisted like they are, but I think I want to inject the dye. So that way we can spread a little more and minimize some flipping. So let's come in with turquoise. Oh my gosh, I did not pay attention to how much I had. <laughs> oh dear. I guess I had like a lot. It's like immediately I was like, oh, we'll add similar amounts, but this time we're sticking that turkey baster in and for a good measure, we will add some more to the top. So let's try, we'll do about 20 mil of each color. This might just be forcing it down towards the bottom, but unlike uh, the first attempt, we will likely still have some white, but we should have more color coverage right away. And I am really excited because while inserting the color into these twisted skeins, it probably will spread some. Given that we've got resist here from the twist, it, if we had them untwisted and I inserted the yarn, the, the color like that, it would probably spread a lot farther. So I am very intrigued by this. And this time I'm just adding little bits towards the end. Oh. 
inserting some and poking down those edges. I am really, really intrigued and excited by this technique. Anything that means that maybe I don't flip it as often, oh, that was a lot, is something that I find pretty exciting. And so this time, unlike with the black, I am not waiting before adding more dye. And what this might do is mean that these other colors blend more uh, before they apply to the yarn. But I think it should still be pretty fun. Okay, let's do like, so even when the, the, the baster isn't uh, pushed into the yarn all the way, this is applying the color with a little bit more force. Uh, and so that could distribute that color a little further, but it does also depend on just how quickly in general these colors are striking to the yarn. Uh, so if I wanted colors to go a little bit further, uh, I probably should have started cold with no acid, but this is really fun. I am really enjoying myself. Can you tell? <laughs> I keep thinking like maybe I'll wait, but so that area is one where I did not inject it. And maybe I'll do the same over here because there I did. So let's go ahead and give our yarn a little bit of time to settle and then we will come back in about 10 minutes. It's really only been about six minutes and there's still like a little bit of color left. Oh, there's some blues down there. Oh, that turquoise. But most of the color has absorbed. So let's take a peek. Okay, I definitely see some white on the side, but that purple is going down multiple layers. The purple is definitely going down multiple layers in here. As we look, there's some areas where it's not, but we definitely do see some down below. There's no question that there is still white left in here, um, but we are having, I think the colors go maybe a little bit further, even without things really going down the sides. For contrast, and there was a lot less dye here overall, you move it at all and you see just like a bunch of white. Um, so I will likely inject purple in those areas now. Uh, I think it would be fun to start with almost no water, but then to come through with uh, large, large volumes of dye uh, to then insert or just pour over the top. So that way it really, really does soak in. But even if you add like a large volume of dilute dye, if there's acid in the yarn already and the colors start to strike at the surface, even as that liquid is being pulled through, think about cake dyeing, right? Even as that liquid is pulled through, you will still see some amount of resist. So to the top, and then just little bits towards that middle. Maybe not much, but we will definitely explore this when we, I'll have to decide if we're gonna just do a straight flip, or if we should open it up and potentially re-twist. This time, the, the first time I did this, I decided not to re-dye it um, at all, but this time I am injecting the dye a little more, but also the pan is more crowded. So we have those two variables. I don't have a ton of dye left, but I think it does depend a little bit to me on exactly, that didn't press down very far, so maybe I'll just do mostly surface. Uh, it does depend to me a bit how much of the color we see uh, left over. I don't know if I'm making sense right now. <laughs> All 
I know is that I am really excited and hopefully I have successfully mostly randomly applied these colors. Some It might be in a little bit of a repeating way in some of these patches. Okay, so this time I'm not injecting it as much as I am applying the dye and then sort of like moving it through. Lots of different things on here. I think it could be hard to make conclusions given that I am sort of mixing up the techniques, but we're very much dying by feel. And I would say, eh, I guess if they were open, I could do these little sections of color. One thing is for sure that whatever is happening in the middle and on the bottom, these colors that we're adding at the top, we do have separate and distinct because they're still at the surface. So I think that there is definitely something really, really fun happening here. But now I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back. It has been 10 minutes and let's see. I'm not seeing, I'm seeing like a little bit of blue but the blue also does stain a bit. So let's open these up and see where we are. Let's start with this one. Ooh, ooh, we've got really great coverage. Really great coverage. I do think there are some white areas. Um, I am debating now. So the last time I did not retwist to dye more. We definitely have more color penetration this time than we did that other time. So, but I think I do want to retwist them. So I think what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to turn off the heat and I am going to Remove the liquid. We have a lot of really great coverage and I don't have a ton of dye left, but I still want to layer on a little bit more color just to see uh, what we see. I think that we actually have more coverage here than we did last time already, probably because we injected that dye a bit. But I am going to briefly set this aside so it can cool a little bit um, and then we will re-twist them, put them back into the same pan and add a tiny bit more dye just to the surface. Another option is honestly to uh, kettle dye the yarn first before this technique so that color that is peeking through wouldn't be white, so it could be another color to start with. But anyway, I will let this cool for a little bit so I can just comfortably handle it, and then we will add it back in. So I am going to sort of shift where the zip tie is a little bit, and then twist this up trying to have some white areas on top. This was the skein that was the far side over there. Uh, it's not perfect, but should help us layer the color. And I am just sort of twisting this a little bit off camera and then bringing it in and fluffing it out. So I think that I like, I probably will, if I do this again, won't go as slow with adding the colors as I did this time. Um, I think that one of the reasons why I went slow was just to sort of get a feel for what was going to happen in various areas as I did this. So I think that you could definitely uh, add a lot of the color all at once and proceed that way. And it's also very possible that you don't need to remove the yarn to let it cool to retwist up, but that is an easy way that I am comfortable with. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat back on. We will likely still have uh, sections with white left after this, but we will break them up a little bit and add a little bit more color. 
So what I'm gonna do is we have just like a little bit of purple left in here. I'm gonna add some water to this cup to give me a larger volume. And so this is gonna add more of a pastel wash of this purple color. And I'm gonna do the same with this bottle that had just a tiny bit. I'd already rinsed it once, so that's already diluted. But it means that we might have some more pastel areas. Some areas might be less pastel. Like the, it depends on how much pigment was left in the container. But this will soften things up at least a bit. And so this blue that I'm adding is more pigmented than that purple I just put on. So I'm actually spreading this more all over. There will still be, there will definitely be some white left. Then I have this bit of black. So now you can see a lot of the yarn is under the surface a little bit. Interesting. So as I pour this in, uh, I am gonna actually hold on to this black for a moment. I wanna give this a little bit of time for some of these blues to set, and then I think I'm gonna inject the black into some areas once we are warmer. But actually, while we are at it, I am gonna add one, two, three more tablespoons of white vinegar since our volume of liquid in here has increased. So I think I'll wait about five minutes and then come back. Now, with the more dilute black, the thing is that, like, I don't really know if these areas where I am injecting it are areas with more or less color. That's not something that I really can see. But I'm injecting it, nevertheless. Uh, and I feel like that this last step, we will likely still have some white, but since we have more pastel areas, I think that that is going to blend everything together a little bit more. And so now my plan is to let, actually, I'm going to rinse out all these containers and bring that last little bit of dye over. Okay. Now I am going to let this heat for 20 minutes, and then I will turn off the heat and let the yarn cool completely. Okay, now it is the time has passed and it's cooled a lot, actually. I want to remove the yarn to let it cool, but what I see is still some more white patches, but it's softened a bit, and I think that those pastels that we now have really do blend things together on what is otherwise still a super loud and fun colorway. So I'm just removing some of the liquid. I'm really curious to see how similar these will look to one another. There are a bit more differences with the second twist, but I do feel like they should feel pretty similar and I'm really excited. So anyway, uh, I am going to go ahead and let these cool and then we can wash it. Let's wash our cooled off and beautiful yarn. The True Turquoise does bleed some. There is some kind of particle or something in there. Although actually, maybe, maybe we'll be in luck since we opened it up and Set it twice, but yeah, I'm expecting to see a tiny bit of some bleeding. Uh, it just needs a bit of time to soak out. So I am going to add some clear dish soap to this and fill up the basin and let the yarn soak for a little while. All right, let's see. Oh, there's no bleeding here. I was so prepared for bleeding because of the other ones. But anyway, I'm going to go rinse out all of the soap and hang this up to dry. Put it through the spin dryer and then hang it up to dry. 
This turned out so beautiful. I am really excited by how much color coverage we really got and that we still have uh, some light patches in here. From just twisting it, I think it was just twice. Uh, this is so much fun and it has a lot of the characteristics of twisting a skein multiple times that I really love while also ultimately being faster to execute because it was all in one pan and I could pour on multiple colors at once and they could blend and spread but we have ooh, I love this there's like a deep blue from where like I think the turquoise and purple and black all combined a bit uh, that is really pretty there it is zoomed in uh, so we did see some blending of color but we also have these distinct patches that are a bit more fluid and random than if I had used, say, a brush or a small syringe to hand paint on a countertop followed by steaming. I think one of the things that held me up about the technique was that my skeins are long enough that I added more twists to make them shorter to fit in the pan. But I think that I could find a happy balance with a little bit of twist, not too much twist, and then scrunching it a little bit in the pan. So this is a technique that I will absolutely play around more with going forward. Uh, for example, I think it would be really, really fun to use this technique with dry powder and to try speckling this way, something where the color coverage is really more shallow. Uh, oh, right, I injected the dye in. I didn't just add to the surface. That added to the coverage that we got, um, but I also didn't have to flip this like four or five times and keep adding color. Granted, we have light patches left, but they are very like spread out and balanced feeling. So if we compare this to what we achieved last time where the pan was less crowded with three skeins, but we ended up still with a lot more white behind, using the basting brush or syringe to inject that dye in deeper, means that really you could do this with almost like a single process uh, where you are applying dye one time and we did apply dye a second time, but anything that means that I'm not flipping it four or five times means that uh, it is easier to replicate in the future. Don, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. I really, really hope that you will love how this yarn turned out. I am absolutely, absolutely thrilled with it. And I am, again, really excited to explore this technique more in the future. So Don, thank you so much for being my lab partner. I really enjoy techniques when I don't know exactly how things will turn out. And one thing I think is always handy to remind people is that it is helpful to approach a dyeing project with, I wonder what will happen if I do this. Because when that's your approach, then it's really easy to be really excited by the results. When I find myself wanting to create something extremely specific and then things aren't working the way that I had in my head, then I find myself feeling a lot more disappointed. And so it's helpful for me to remind myself that part of the joy of me doing this is sort of having a bit of a plan, but then seeing how the dyes are interacting with the yarn and the technique, and then modifying my plan as needed to move forward. But if you still don't love the yarn that you ended up with, you can always over dye it. So that is an option. You can always end up marching towards something that is a navy or a black if you aren't satisfied with where you ended up with. This yarn is so much fun, man. And I know that a turquoise, purple, and black is a very uh, safe color combination for me. But I am truly trying to branch out and trying to challenge myself to play with colors in different ways. And this is one big reason why I do the Chemnitz Dialog every month to sort of challenge myself to pick new and different color combinations. Uh, so uh, you can actually find all of those videos in a playlist on the channel. And that's worth browsing through if you need some color inspiration 
for yourself. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.